Okay, in this tutorial, I just want to spend a little bit of time going over some of the errors and warnings I've had during the filming of these tutorials. One of the main problems I had, and it happened on a Sunday, was the failure of Maven to read my Maven repository. In fact, the actual scenario was is that I deleted the Maven repository, refreshed it on a Sunday, and then every jar file that was downloaded to Maven Central and installed on my local machine had been corrupted. The result being these bizarre error messages. When you first look at it, it looks like a compilation failure because it's in the Maven compiler plugin. But when you look further down and you read the actual error messages, there's error reading the various jar files from my M2 repository. And then some weird error here, invalid lock header, invalid CM header. And at the bottom here, can't read jar file entry. Now luckily I've seen this a couple of times in the past. It happens very infrequently, but it does happen. And it's important to know how to deal with it. The cause is basically, your dependencies that are downloaded from Maven Central have somehow been corrupted. Either they were corrupted on Maven Central, or they were corrupted while they're being downloaded, or they were corrupted while they're being saved on the hard drive on your local machine. Somewhere on the process has caused those jars jar files to become corrupted. So what we need to do is to go to our M2 directory and just refresh the repository. Now this is my .m2 folder, which relates to my Maven installation. And bear in mind that I'm running on a Windows 7 machine, so by default it's under my user profile of Denner Programming. So on your machine it may be in a different location depending on your operating system. But if you're on a Windows environment, it's most probably under Users, your username, and then look for the .m2 folder. We looked at it earlier for setting up the settings.xml file. And within there there's a repository folder, and if you expand into that, you should see every dependency that's being downloaded from Maven Central onto your local hard drive. So it follows a notation of the group ID followed by the artifact ID. So if we go to org and have a look at the spring dependencies, go org, spring framework, and then within the spring framework, we have the various artifacts. So you've got the Spring Web MVC artifact. So here we have the various releases of the Spring MVC framework from 3.1.1 to 4.0.1 and 4.0.3. And there we have our Spring Web MVC 4.0.3 release jar file. Now if these get corrupted, as we saw earlier in that error message, the simple thing is, is to basically just right click on here and delete. And don't worry about doing this. So back in Eclipse, to refresh our Maven repository, we just need to right click on our project, do run as, then Maven build with three dots, do the clean and package. So it's going to take a while now because uh, everything's been downloaded fresh. So I'm going to freeze the video now while the repository is being recreated. OK, so all the plugins have been downloaded successfully and recreated our Maven repository. And we've got build successful as well. So now we can go over to our project where we've got the red cross. And we can do a Maven update project three dots. I always uncheck the clean projects now. Hit OK. We've got updating Maven project and a percentage sign here. It may take a while. It's doing quite a lot of work now. 
And there we go, all the crosses and exclamation marks are being removed now. Now let's check to make sure it works on our server. So we can do right click, run as, run on server. Let's check to make sure it works, we enter new. And that works fine. So that resolved that problem. If we go over to our Explorer, we can now see the new repository created. And we have a subset of the previous jar files because basically I've cleaned up some of the other stuff I no longer need. But we can go into Org, Spring Framework, and we have all our Spring dependencies. And we just have the 403 release now. And that's how to refresh your Maven repository. Just remember not to delete this settings.xml file, just the repository folder itself. Okay, so the final problem I had, and um, it's quite easy to fix because I've shown you the correct way of resolving this, so you shouldn't actually get this, but if you do, it's basically file not found and when you read this rather long string here you'll see it goes into web resources metainf manifest.mf and the web resources lives under this m2e wtp folder which lives under the target directory now i've mentioned in the previous tutorial how to run using wtp within eclipse and i always do the maven update and that resolves this because when you do a Maven update, this M2E WTP folder and the web resources and the manifest.mf file all get generated. Let's go over to Eclipse and see that happen again. Okay, so we're back in Eclipse. Let's go over to our web application, sample web app. And we can expand that. And here we've just done a clean, or I've just done a clean, so the project is without the target folder. And we're also without the m2e wtp folder within that so let's do a run as with three dots we can do a clean again and package that'll kick off our build does the clean compiles resources tests package up our war file success over here click on the project, hit F5. Now we have our target folder, we can expand that. Now this is where we would hit problems potentially. It depends sometimes on the server. WTP doesn't clear its cache properly. So you may get an old manifest.mf file within here. But you should always make sure this gets generated within the target folder. So right click on the project, go down to Maven, update project with three dots. Make sure your project selected and deselect the clean project. Hit OK. Now the M2E WTP folder has been generated. And if we scroll down into that, you've got your manifest.mf file. So if we run that, and after the name of the web application, just type new. So the web app works fine. If we look in the navigator, and I'll show you the reason why I do uncheck the clean classes selection. So if we do Maven, update project three dots. If I leave clean project selected, watch what happens. Under target classes, all the classes that we've just compiled have been erased. 
So now when we run on server, restart the server, okay. It comes up with the home page, which is basically just HTML. And then when we go to our application, my web app, and type in new, we get a HTTP status 404. Let's head over to the console, see any output. You also notice in here that there's no spring web initializer detected on the class path. Basically what it's saying is that this class doesn't exist on the class path. Well it can't do because it's just being deleted. So that's why I uncheck that box. So if we do, the way around that now is to do a complete new build. We need to recompile those classes. Okay, everything's compiled, tested, and packaged up. We refresh this now. You see under classes, we have our compiled classes, okay. And those are the classes that go on the class path for WTP. It doesn't use the classes within the wall file. Now the thing that's missing is the M2 WTP folder. So again, we need to do our Maven update project with three dots. And this time we unselect the clean project and hit OK. So at this point, we now have our M2E WTP folder with manifest.mf. And we also have our compiled classes. So now we do a right click, run as, run on server. Restart the server, OK. This is our home page again of the My Web app. See if it works, we'll enter new. And it works fine. If we look at the console, You see spring, the info spring web app initialized and detected on class path and basically that boots up the web application because it's using the spring MVC framework. That's basically because it's a compiled class here, web initializer. So as long as you follow that process you shouldn't get any problems with this missing manifest.mf file and you shouldn't get any problems with the web initializer missing or classes missing on your class path because WTP uses these. Okay I hope that helps that's the end of this um, troubleshooting tutorial. The first trouble or problem I hit was the actual refreshing of the Maven repository and that's easy to do. And the second one is using WTP within Eclipse. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to run Maven from the command line. It's very easy and very straightforward, but sometimes you want to do it. And if you're going to use a continuous integration environment, you'll be using similar commands to invoke Maven from the command line or from a batch file.